Welcome back to Nick Lane's Comic Core Classic Slash Non Classic. This episode number 826 and double shot number 720. This one was not exactly planned to do today, but decided to do anyway because I finished that couple of trades. Anyways, so two Marvel trades. I actually purchased these from a local store called Ali's for basically five bucks a piece. I got a pretty good deal. I got like four of these, and in the next episode, I'll do one of them along with Library Trade and. Uh, the fourth one I'll handle a little bit later. First up, it is the Death Wolverine, the Logan Legacy. This collects the seven-issue limited series. Yes, seven issues. Technically put, six, uh, one and seven are basically bookend issues, and issues two through six are basically standalone issues that the first issue sets up. Who does these issues? Now, these issues got each got different creative team on them. Okay. Charles Show writes the first issue and the last issue of the series. The artwork for the first issue was done by Oliver Nomi. And for issue 7 is Peter Nolligan. For issue 2 is Tim Seeley on the writing with on with Arila Christina. On the artwork, three is done by Kyle Higgins, and writing is done by Jonathan Marks. Four is done by Margie Bennett, who, let's see, you have June Doe does who does the who does the artwork and the color and the cover art. Five is done by Ray Fox, and artwork is done by Elena Batelli. Six is done by James Henry the Fourth, Andy Clark. One thing I just noticed, though, while I'm looking at this, it seems like, with the exception of Charles Show, every single writer of this book, uh, of these is of issues, uh, of the, with the exception of the book and the issues, the ones who write the actual individual issues, they're all Batman writers. Yeah, I'm not kidding about this. I mean, Tim Seeley, who recently did, uh, he did something like Grayson and Nightwing. I think his most recent book I could think of he did was, he did Hellblazer recently, well, The Hellblazer. Which just ended, and he also did. He was the second to last writer for Green Lanterns. I don't know what he does currently, but he also let's see. Kyle Higgins, writer of Nightwing for a little over two years. He wrote Nightwing New War, New Order series, and he even got a hand in the first Batman Eternal series. <laughs> Marjorie Bennett, the uh, the writer of Batwoman. I know she wrote recently, but this was like afterwards. And of course, James Tim the Fourth. No one can deny the fact this guy's been involved in Batman comics since 2011. Yeah, he was basically Scott Snyder's co-writer throughout a majority of the second volume. And of course, he was the second, no, third and most. Uh, he was two writers back. He was one of one, one of the more re recent writers for Tita Comics. He took over from PJ Tomasi. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now the characters in this series are. Sabretooth, Lady Deathstrike, Dokken, X-23, Mystique, and Elixir. Though there's no individual issue for Elixir for some reason. Yeah, there's no issue for Elixir. Each issue is focused on a different person. Also, in the first issue, they're gathered together and, and simply put the rest of the series is simply how they got there. And they went to Charles Xavier, which is during a period of time when he's actually dead. Of course, when the series came out in 2013. I believe it was. Was it 2013 or 2014? This came out in... I don't think it was 2012. No, yeah, it was 2014. Mm -hmm. From 2014 to 2015. Yeah, Wolverine had been dead at this point for a good... Like, right now, he, Garcy, he just came back recently. He's been dead for four years. Yep, four years. Mm -hmm. So the end of the first issue is like, okay, are we going to follow this next issue? No, we have to wait to the last issue to find out about this. Two is basically focused on... Lore. This is this is the Kyle, this is the Tim Seeley issue. It's is really really good. It's just basically an issue that just just a standalone story for Laura, and of course I have a guest appearance by the X Men, well the pre, the past X Men and the present. Team with somebody who used to be part of Alpha Flight, working with her father. The three uh, I've heard about this particular one. Uh, there was one reviewer who described it as having the worst artwork of the whole series. I don't have a really big problem with this artwork. It's okay. I don't have a really big problem with it. It's actually not that bad. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, the stadium he's, the, this guy is taking to is Studio Stadium Magashu. This is the Sabretooth issue. The writing is actually pretty good because, of course, it's Kyle Higgins. Yep, the guy is a damn good writer. Four is Lady Deathstrike. Yep, Lady Deathstrike. Great character. Mm -hmm. Though I should point out, though, this is not her classic look. This is actually a recent look that she took up. Yeah, she took this up after the after X after X two X Men United came out, and since that point, she's either wearing this outfit or the all black jumpsuit that she wore from the film, and she's drawn very similar to Kelly Who, who actually played her in the film. Mm -hmm. This was this one is her going to Japan and finding out about various different things. It's just a uh, solo story for Lady Esther, and it's really good. Um, I'm so surprised they've never g actually given her a series. Like, every single character who has a one-shot issue has had a series at point, except for Lady Deathstrike, which is really weird. Because the way that Kyle Higgins writes this is like, man, this is so interesting. I would love to see a mini-series for Lady Deathstrike, and so far it has been one. Five is one focus on Dokken. Yes, Dokken. Which, for some reason, despite the fact this came out... I think this was of the top of my head. This was just this was just just at, this is just after his appearance in the Apocalypse Twin storyline, which took up, which actually ended with issue twenty two, I believe it was. Yeah, this came out just after that, and somehow he's no longer possessed by Death Seed. Yeah, this is what he looks like. Yeah, this. Yeah, that's the outfit he wore in the series. As for how they reversed the whole Death Seed thing in him. Yeah, that was uh, this so far has never been explained. It's just that he's back to normal for some reason. Despite the fact when he's last seen, he looked a little different, mainly his skin. Yeah, with this issue, it's just well, his father's uh, two as far as bone claws fell for auction. He finds out about it, interrupts the auction, gets her, gets hands of the bone claws. He also runs into Mystique and Viper. Viper, of course, those of you who don't know about her and her connection to Wolverine. She at one point was married to Wolverine. Yes, she was for about two years. And the reason why she got married to him was so that she can get Mandrapore. Yes, that's the reason why she married him. She wanted him to marry her. And then, like, right after she took over Mandrapore, okay, he, he, she can give him anything he wants. And what did he want? A divorce. Yeah. He wanted a divorce, and he got it. He got divorced from her. Yep. Six is a focus on Mystique, of her breaking into a shoe facility and breaking out Destiny. Yeah, those are the curious of how the heck this woman came back to the being killed off just prior to the events of Age of Apocalypse storyline. How she came back, she came back in the storyline Nerosha. Yeah, she's brought back by Selene. Yeah, and she's not possessed by the virus. She was resurrected by her. And I gotta say, the artwork of the two is fantastic. I think this artist should do more Marvel books because this artwork is so good. Um, this is issue six. This is done by... Excuse me, Andy Clarkey. Yeah, this is the person who does the artwork for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's her breaking out Destiny. She does succeed in breaking out Destiny. As far as I know, I don't think that she's popped up since then, but this was actually her first appearance. At this point, for the first time in, I think it was about four years. Actually, no, I think it was almost five years since her last appearance because she appeared just before the event just came before Second Coming, which was Narosha, obviously. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, so after the Rosha, she didn't appear against this very storyline. Issue 7 features Elixir, and they meet the character Shogun who later becomes a regular character in the series that comes right after this one, and, of course, Weapon X Project, Wolverines, which is a series that was a weekly comic book that lasted for 20 issues before being just ended because of Secret Wars. Who knows what Charles Rose's plans were for that series, but Secret Wars interrupted everything. Yeah. And, of course, in, in the issue 7, it mentions something about Elixir being stuck being black because if anybody touches the skin, they automatically die. It's kind of like a death touch. Yeah, he first got that. The first time he got that particular power was 
actually when he killed when when he killed William Stryker in the pages of New X Men. Mm -hmm. I gotta say this is actually a really good series, but I gotta say this series overshadowed another mini series that came out right after the Wolverine, the Weapon X Project, which is a really good mini series. I would love to get my hands on the trailer that collects it, but. I'm happy I got my hands on this. I'm going to give this book a 9.5 out of 10. It's really good. I don't have a problem with any of the stories in here. It's just a really good mini series. Yep. Next up, it is Venom Volume 1. Collecting the first five issues of Venom Volume 2. Written by Rick Remender. Artwork by Tony Moore of The Walking Dead. Yeah, he does the artwork in here. And Tom Fowler. I don't think he's related to Brand Fowler from Comic Frontline. Mm hmm. And here's a sample of Tony Moore's artwork. Yeah, this is the first five issues of the 42 issue comic book. Now, this is also the start of Recommender's, well, his run for the book, which lasted for 22 issues. Yes, 22 issues. Yeah, it's not a very long trait. It's just him going on missions. And, of course, in the series, you have Spider-Man show up. Now, at this point, those of you curious, though, when in the world does Spider-Man find out that Flash Thompson is Venom? He actually didn't find out until two years ago. No, seriously, this is actually completely true. He actually found out about this toward the end of the Vem Space Knight series, which the last couple issues actually have loose and from this series. No joke, it seriously did. Yeah, and those of you curious of how this series got set up, this got set up in one of those uh, point ones, one of the first of three Amazing Spider-Man had. This was the first one. This was a, I think this was 654.1, which had Flash Thompson get the Venom symbiote and they became, became Age of Venom. Now, you are thinking, that's what the Venom alone looks like. Well, he's Age of Venom. He looks like this, which is actually pretty good look for him. He was using guns and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like a James Minus series. I'm going behind enemy lines with the Project Rebirth 2.0. It's a good storyline. But then Spider-Verse basically kind of interrupted things, and he had to go on the run after Spider-Verse. Of course, he's having a very bad relationship with his girlfriend, Betty Brandt. Yeah, these two have dated on and off since, I think, the 70s. Yeah, he keeps frequently going back to her. At one point, I should point out that Flash Thompson was actually married to a woman named Sha Shane. And get this, they divorced because she, he had an affair with Betty Brandt. I'm not kidding. That seriously happened. And also, we get introduced to a new Jack-O-Lantern, who pretty much becomes the main villain, who pretty much becomes, like, one of the two main villains of this entire run. He appears for pretty much almost every single issue of this run, except for the Spider-Verse, except for the Spider-Island issues. Yeah, I'm thinking, that's a little weird. He doesn't appear for Spider-Island, but he does appear for, like, every other issue of the whole series. He appears for a good chunk of it. As for who Jack O' Lantern is, it was never revealed because this Jack O' Lantern, after this run ended, he was never seen again. And they also introduced the Crime Master. Yeah, the Crime Master. Awesome villain, this guy. This is the third Crime Master. The original one was Nick Lewis Sr., who was a Steve Dicko character. Not a very well known Spider Man villain. But I got a praise recommended for bringing back this character. Though it's not Nick Lewis. It's not his son, Nick Lewis Jr. As for who it is, they actually do not reveal that until Savage 6. Yeah, it's not until that very storyline that some recommender actually reveals who he really is. I gotta say, having a mystery for almost two years of who the Crime Master is, brilliant stroke of genius on the part of the recommender to do. And... Because Rick Remender is known for doing weird storylines, this makes sense. Now, this is followed with any other book that he's done, because he has a tendency to do this when he uh, starts something one book before it ends, uh, when he has something that he wants to bring back in the book. This book, as far as I know, he never did anything with it. He just basically made this his own book. Has like barely connections to any of the other books he's done. I know he's done it with X Force and Captain America and Kenny Avengers, where sometimes these books are loosely connected because he brings back characters into the books. This series he doesn't, and this is also by far I can think of probably one of the first times he actually wrote Spider Man. Yeah, he actually had Spider Man show up in, in, these, in these issues. Mm -hmm. Yep. I gotta say, for the start of this particular run, it's fantastic. 
I give this book a 9.5 out of 10. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Yep. So, yeah. If you're a fan of Venom, check this book out. But this is the start of the Flash Thompson run, not Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock has had an ongoing series as Venom prior to recently. Like, people are thinking, though, oh, Eddie Brock didn't have an ongoing series until, like, last year. That is actually completely wrong. He actually had one back in 2003. Lasted for 18 issues. And it was written by Daniel Way. Yeah, he wrote the original Venom comic book. Mm -hmm. This is the second volume of it. And this volume does count as part of the numbering for Venom, along with Venom Space Knight and all the other Venom comic books from the 90s. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned when I get a chance to do the next episode. But soon I'm going to do my my net, my my uh, review for Rape Master. I decided to do this now because I got the trades done. Why not talk about them? Okay? But to see the next review. Bye.